You are now listening to the Artist King Podcast, featuring interviews with professional artists, entrepreneurs, and art business educators. Artist King Podcast, Episode 16, published weekly around the world from ATL on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker.com. Starting September 9th, we begin the Artist King 2014 panel discussions, an eight-week conference from September 9th to November 4th that features art galleries, design firms, freelance professionals, art industry experts, and they share their art business tips, advice, and resources for up-and-coming artists. Artist King is designed to connect artists with organizations in charge of the galleries and agencies that artists come in touch with during their careers. Artist King includes lectures on branding, marketing, web presence, the future of art, art business advice, and one-of-a-kind speed networking sessions with various art industry professionals. The first Artist King 2014 panel discussion takes place at Binders Art Store at Ponce City Market, 650 North Avenue Northeast, Suite S102. It's free and open to the public. For more info, please visit artistking.org. We will now take a moment to thank our great sponsors, the Law Offices of Deborah Gonzalez, Binders Art Store, Atlanta Tech Village, C4 Atlanta, Wonder Root, Burn Away, and Velocity Screen Print, sponsors of the awesome Artist King t-shirts every year. Get you a t-shirt November 22nd at the Way of the Artist Group Bar Show at Atlanta Tech Village. For more info, visit artistking.org. Now, a little bit about our special Artist King Artist Interview featuring Mr. Gilbert Young, curator of culture, art industry veteran of over 50 years, and President Obama event crasher. Mr. Gilbert Young is very open about his opinions on life and art. If you are an artist and have ever spoken to Mr. Young, then your art has been harshly critiqued and your ego may be bruised. As an artist, Mr. Young knows the struggles artists face in developing talent and earning a living with art. Please check out the work of Mr. Gilbert Young online anywhere and everywhere by searching for his name, Gilbert Young. Now here is our Artist King Artist Interview. So I'm sitting here talking to Mr. Gilbert Young, curator of culture. <laughs> I say that because you said that to me once. That's right. <laughs> That's right. If you if you you gotta claim it. Yeah. And it, it becomes yours. And what does that mean? Well, that means in a sense that I'm much knowledgeable about what has happened and where we are going, and uh, my existence has been kind of analytic as far as uh, our social uh, uh, gains and our social ills. Mm-hmm. Got it. And it's long. It's a long career. It's long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell us about the beginnings of that career. Well, it started um, <laughs> as a young child, of course. Uh, I was <clears throat> interested in drawing and and uh, because that's the only thing I was good at in school, really. Uh, I was the worst student there ever was. I wasn't interested in anything else. And my my, my second grade, uh, 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 first grade teacher put me on stage and during Easter break. It's going to be Easter break the next, uh, you know, that, that weekend. And they had me to draw a uh, Easter bunny and eggs. Mm-hmm. And while I drew, uh, the, the teacher... Another teacher played on the piano, uh, the old master painter from the faraway hills. Okay. Now, that is actually a song, and I looked it up, uh, uh, and and was to my surprise just recently, it's on on, on you can find it on on the internet. Mm-hmm. And but when I drew that 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 uh, uh, little drawing, and my little colleagues uh, went crazy about it, you mm-hmm. know. 
I said, okay, this is it. I know what I'm going to do. They put you on the stage. They put me on it the stage. It was a performance. It was a performance. <laughs> <laughs> First yeah. or second grade, something yes. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, so I, 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 I told my grandmother after that uh, I was going to be a famous artist mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and be rich and buy her a house. All right. Yeah. yeah. So artists were rich. In your mind. In my mind, they were that's all right. rich. They were rich. They were, they they were, were rich. Were. Right. Anybody in a book is rich. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Book, you, yeah. You see a, see a person in a book, uh -huh. they got to be rich. Uh-huh. Right? You don't, you, don't see, you don't see, I ain't seen no poor per person in the book. <laughs> Hell, I saw some artists in the book. Uh -huh. I saw Michelangelo and, and uh, mm -hmm. people like that. Hell, uh, mm -hmm. that was for me. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> I want what they had. Yeah, that's I right. want what they had. That's right. right. Okay. And so you were born and raised in Cincinnati. Yes. And, uh, um, you know, like I said, uh, was the worst student in the world. Uh, I got sent home a couple of times with notes saying they give daydreams all day long. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that, it, Did you sit around wondering uh, ideas and uh, yeah, I was, but, not uh, engage? Uh, not engage. If I had a pencil in my hand, even I drew in math class, I could make uh, faces out of the numbers. Eight, you know, right. eight made a teddy bear. Uh -huh. Seven made 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 the top of a hat, and mm -hmm. and so on and so on and so on. And you you know you you could do a whole lot of things with numbers and That's and, right. and so my mind was always clicking towards that. Mm -hmm. And uh, a teacher named Miss Phillips, my first black teacher. That's why these things are, but it, that's not being racist, but. Because the first teacher put me on stage w was white, mm -hmm. but the the second teacher that that recognized me, I was a little older, and I was going into the, uh, I was I think I was in the, about the sixth grade, mm -hmm. and uh, she said, uh, "Walk me home now." You, when you got walked home by a teacher, you were in trouble. Okay. Okay. So I was, I, I didn't know what the deal was. You <laughs> All know, right. all I know, she was going to walk me home, mm -hmm. and she went and told my mother that uh, we ought to put this child in a special school. That happens on Saturday. Uh, my mother looked at her like she was, you know, that uh, she was crazy. Mm -hmm. it, we had no money, mm -hmm. right? It was, I think it was six of us living in three rooms. Okay. Okay. No, we had no money for no special school. Well, mm -hmm. she said, no, it's free and it's on Saturdays and it's at the art museum. Just have them go up there and sign up for it. Wow. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Later on, I won a full scholarship to that same institution. What? That was great. Yeah. That was an awesome opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you know, so things fall in place when you're persistent mm -hmm. and you uh, are, are, are going in that direction. You can't sit back and lay back and think mm -hmm. uh, things going to fall in place. It never has. People be, yeah, they're not coming to you. They're, they're not coming, mm -hmm. and, and, and you got to go and be ready. Whether you know where to go or not, but you got mm -hmm. to be ready, and that's, that's right. what I keep trying, trying to drum into to the young people's head, is mm -hmm. that half of them that I have seen are not ready, too old with too little of a talent, mm -hmm. and too big of an ego. Mm -hmm. They've been working on their ego and not on their talent. They have been working on their ego for, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, you see them around sometimes. They they, they carry. Carry, uh, they have painted clothes and they have big uh, portfolios mm -hmm. and uh, they stand on a corner doing virtually nothing, making $25 a hit, mm -hmm. drawing some, some portraits. They found a way to make some cash and just like every, every other person probably think that the, the money is everything. Mm -hmm. And the talent and the persistence is what matters. The talent and the persistence, because that's what we're looking at. When we look at history, we're looking at extreme talents mm. in all fields that have lasted throughout time. Yeah. Not just, you know, not just in the arts, but in the everything. Because I believe one thing. We use the word artist too tightly. We should use it more loosely and say that uh, when you, you have a person that creates a nation he had to it, it, whatever he was doing it was, was pure art it was mm -hmm. the love and the, and, the, and the sensitivity that it takes to build that, that city or town or that culture or that community as mm -hmm. a pure art mm -hmm. okay right we, we think of artists as only in one area 
you know, raising a child could be an art. Yeah. And it is an art because yeah. it, it's a constant work and constant constant uh, uh, sensitivity towards towards that child. Some dedication. And dedication, observation, mm -hmm. all the things that you use to to create a great work of art. Yeah. That's true. So we're all artists in one way or another. One way or another. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now uh, we can all be good artists or bad artists or poor artists. <laughs> <laughs> it's not equal. Yeah. This, this, is right. not <laughs> this is not an equal opportunity. To kind, some, kind of okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's true. Okay. So how, you say you got a scholarship, and um, is that because uh, you continue to go and grow, and by the time you finish high school, you had a... Uh, well, by the time I finished high school, I won 35 uh, scholastic awards in art, won national competition, and then w and won full scholarship. Oh. And, I, and so you I graduated. entering the contest. Uh, yeah, the I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. In my, was, in my junior, junior high school, I won a, a national contest. Um, and I don't even know what we got for it. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, it was a project where I went to vocational school. And mm -hmm. that was like going to heaven, where I could build stuff, design stuff, yeah. you know, and all kinds of things. So they had a project where you had to take a, a, a quarter-inch metal rod and in, mm -hmm. in, in steel, and you had to make a, an ashtray holder, and mm -hmm. you only had one rod to do it. Okay. Okay. And I figured it out, and I made mine. And how'd you do it? What, did you bend it or something? Yeah, you had to bend it. Okay. You had to bend it. Okay. And uh, and it had to it had to be chair high so that the guy would, who was smoking uh -huh. would be able to... Oh, had to stand on his own off to the ground. On, off the ground. On his wow. Own. Yeah. So you had to uh, really um, get creative with it. You that. had to be creative with it. Mm -hmm. There was one simple movement mm -hmm. that I created. Wow. And it held the air tray and it stood on the floor. At the same okay. time. Okay. Okay. Very good. So all of y'all figure it out. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. Sketch figure it out. out. Sketch, sketch out. Some ideas. Sketch out in how would you do it? Yeah. And then uh, that'd be an interesting project. How would how would how would they do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. One piece, one long rod. Uh, you can take the length whatever you want, but you, but it had to be one piece. It cannot be two pieces combined or soldered. Or section off, it had to be a continuous one line movement. Wow. Hmm. And how many people were in this class or this project? Or it, was, this it was supposed challenge? to be. A, it was a national c contest. Oh, and you won overall. Yeah. Dang. All right. But you talk about 1958. I guess <laughs> it might have been even earlier than that. I doubt if yeah. anybody remember that, that that project. Very cool. Yeah. So that was my first major award. And then, you know, the, they had also uh, sc uh, scholastic awards where you entered every year. Kids in the school had, you know, you, uh, they call it Shilto's Scholastic Award, where you, we all entered our drawings from each school, and, mm -hmm. and they picked the best drawing. And that's why, how I won. Uh, then I entered in the portfolio competition in the, in the 12th, year, uh, 12th okay. year, and that's how I won my full scholarship. So by then you had a, a, good, a good list of artwork and put together to show off yeah. your overall skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and, and I think I was going to a vocational school and my major at that time became commercial art because they didn't have a fine arts program but commercial art mm -hmm. and, and, and where I, I learned how to do a lot of, a lot of processes, silk screens and, mm -hmm. and stuff of that nature, design and portfolio design, studio uh, uh, backdrops and everything else. Mm -hmm. Everything by hand. Yeah, everything by hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the, 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 the computer stuff. No, they, we, we, cut, we cut the stencil, we made the stencil, we drew the stencil, we did everything. <laughs> <laughs> you needed patience. A lot well, of patience and Well, you needed a lot of skill. Yeah. Yeah, I could still cut a mat and mm -hmm. split, the, split the line without, wow. a, without a straight edge. Hmm. What? Yeah. All right. I do that shit all the time. Getting <laughs> 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 too cheap to go get it. <laughs> to go get it done. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Just do it yourself. Okay. Yeah. So you go to college or... or I, went, I, went to, I went off to art, art, art uh, school there and uh, found out that I was too poor to even be there. 
For Janet's scholarship. I had a scholarship, but I, 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 I had to eat, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I didn't have bus fare. I didn't have no fare. Now I'm, I'm I'm you know at 18, and and, and, and when you when you're 18 years old, you uh, you come from a poor family. You better be uh, ready to do some work. Do some earn work. Some money. Earn some money, right? Yeah, yeah. But I couldn't earn any money going to school, and I, it wasn't an out of town thing. It wasn't a, that they gave me a stipend to 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 travel or, or food or anything. They just gave me the monies that would have required to enter the school. Right. And I was on my own. Yeah. And so I said, uh, oh, well, I can't do this. I had to drop the scholarship. I gave it to the one runner up mm-hmm. and uh which was a friend, believe it or not, he was okay. right behind me. And uh he got it and after three months, you know, I had to give it up and then I, I and then I tried to go back to school part time. Okay. Well, so you had to get a job. But I had to get a job. I could pay for it mm-hmm. part time. Right. So what kind of job did you get? Well, I got one of the best jobs in the whole wide world. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of job is that? I want that kind of job. Well, I dropped a painting. I, uh, uh, well, my mother had met this guy named Byron Adams, and he was a conservation or restorer of paintings. Okay. And I went down there. She said, um, Mr. Adams, you promised my son when he was 16 a job, and, here's, and she did it in a note. She sent me with a note and said, here he is. He's ready for the job. Okay. Now, this poor guy was stuck, mm-hmm. and he gave me a job sweep, sweeping the floor every other day. Okay. And so that's how I got my start. I swept the floor in this conservation lab, and it was spotless, and I was supposed to keep it spotless and make sure everything was dust-free, blah, 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 blah. And, but it was in the most exclusive store in Cincinnati, and it was, for well, you know, only, only the very, very rich went in there. Mm-hmm. And it, they sold uh, art. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had decorators. You know, we go in there, you don't buy furniture. You had a personal decorator to come to assist you okay. to decorate your home. All right. Okay, so we were on the fourth floor of a five floor building where before you get to our shop, you had to walk through the framing shop where all they did all, all, all the framing of the fine arts and, and, and stuff of that nature. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and so um, I was there. Uh, all 120 pounds of me, <laughs> and uh, I dropped the painting on the edge of the table. You dropped it. Yeah. You were holding it, walking with it. Doing no, something. no, I was sneaking around while he was gone, and and I uh, wanted to look at all the paintings, and <laughs> I pulled it out, and uh-huh. and, and the doggone screen door to the bathroom uh, uh, door to the bathroom slammed and scared me, and I dropped the painting. And uh, it hit the corner of the table, put a hole in it. Wow. And the price tag said $3,000, 1961. Dang it. $3,000. I said more than dang it. Right, right, (laughs) right. They had a God on front front of it. But anyway. (laughs) God dang it. Okay. Uh But um, um, so I had watched him a few times, and I saw what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So I tried to do what he did when he wasn't looking or when he was out and I would hide the painting. Then one day I came in there and uh, he was holding the painting in his lap and never will forget it, sitting on his stool by the easel, the drawing board rather, and said, uh, <clears throat> you did it, didn't you, young man? Mm-hmm. I had big old crocodile tears in my eyes and I'm like, yes, sir. And he said, okay, come with me. And I thought, oh God, they're kicking me out. Mm-hmm. Right, and uh, my mother gonna kill me because she was relying on that twenty dollars to help out. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had an elevator, an elevator operator. Okay. Okay, and his name was Fletcher, and we, we got on the elevator. And he said, "Yeah, I mean these old time old black names." So he mm-hmm. said, "Okay, Fletcher, take me down." One, I said, "Oh Lord, he's kicking me out, and I'm not going to get my. I'm not going to get. I'm not going to get paid, yeah. right?" And he walked in there and walked in the front of the store and said, "Follow me." And I said, "What?" And he said, "Follow me." And I followed him, and we went around, around to the art store, and he bought me five hundred dollars worth of equipment and said, "Be here every day." What? So you had done such a good job in in the in fixing your painting because you had to patch the canvas. And yes. fix the paint. Yeah. And blend it all in, make yeah. it look like nothing happened. Yes. 
But I, I wasn't that damn good. Now, I had potential. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had potential. Uh, and, and, and then he sat there and he trained me and trained me and trained me and trained me every day. That man was the meanest man I ever met in my life. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Because right. nothing I did was right. So he would give you an assignment of what to paint. He gave me an assignment technique. of what, what, to, what to do. Uh-huh. And he said, okay, we'll, today we're going to reline this painting. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to put a new, new, new canvas on it. We're using beeswax and, and, and wax release paper and irons and all the stuff that, that, uh-huh. that, we, that I know how to use. And uh, train me to do those things. Mm-hmm. And then, then turn it over, let it cool off, clean it off chemically, clean the old one so do all, all the thing, put new new ground on it, new new uh, support systems, new ground and everything. Mm-hmm. I got so good I did something that I don't think anybody ever does. Then what's that? I took the cam- mm-hmm. canvas completely off of an old painting. So you separated the old painting from the canvas? Yes. Even though, so when we paint, we use oil, whatever materials, oils in this case, mm-hmm. and paint on the canvas, mm-hmm. and then that's your painting. Yes. So what you did was... I took the canvas off the paint, the, uh-huh. the painting itself, uh-huh. and put a new canvas on. What? Yeah. And you can do that. People can do that. <laughs> you can do that. It was a, very carefully. Very carefully, mm-hmm. and hours and hours and hours and hours of scraping with a scalpel to remove the canvas. And you gotta do like a little bit at a time. A little bit at a, at a time, and and get to the ground, which is called the gesso. Uh huh. Wow. Okay. Wore out hundreds of blades doing that. And what's the purpose of that? Is it the old, the canvas is bad? The or canvas was dry rotted to unbelievable. It's oh. old. But the paint, but the oil painting is still the, good. The all the the ground uh, the ground and the oils are, are still good. Hmm. And I just wanted to see if I could do something that hadn't, hadn't been done, challenge myself. You did that at the shop? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then yeah. Put, put the new canvas on it mm-hmm. and um, restretched it, mm-hmm. and boom. And then it, I, I don't believe that one had any tears. It was just the canvas was so weak and so dry rotted. I see. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you had to, like, pull the canvas off of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you say you, you pull you the canvas to, off the oils, yeah, yeah, not yeah. the oil. <laughs> you, you, had to, you, had to, you had to stabilize it. The trick yeah. was how do, how do you stabilize the front? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Figure that one out, too. And I, 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 <laughs> get back with me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the second challenge. Yeah, second podcast. challenge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was, that was fun. And that was mm-hmm. fun. I learned a lot. Great deal. Like, I, I learned... I learned about painting. I learned about color. I learned about value. I learned about depth. I learned about all these things because you had to match the other guy's work. There are mm-hmm. certain colors that you cannot match with one color. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the painters don't know that today. And, and one of the problems is that they're painting with one color, trying to get something that actually is layers of glazing. Mm. And we know what glazing is, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Go ahead and tell us. Well, it is when you lay the, your primary color down, mm-hmm. and uh, then you put, let it dry, and then you come back with a glazing material, which is a oily, waxy uh, lubricant, mm-hmm. and you put a translucent color on top, and mm-hmm. those colors begin to shine through the the the, the basic color shine through. The translucent allow it to still be a red, but now it's an orangey red. But you can't mix that orangey red mm-hmm. or that yellow red mm-hmm. with just pure color. Mm-hmm. Mixing it wet, mm-hmm. you have to let it dry. And to, so that's the trick to some of the great masters. They understood that, and they knew how to uh, uh, do a lot of glazing uh, of, of the colors that you see and you say, well, I could never paint like that. You know, you can't paint like that with one, one stroke. Mm-hmm. It's, it's many strokes over top of a color. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, uh, if you look at uh, uh, some of the masters, uh, Van Gogh and that would, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Michael Anderson and that would, would take and, and paint a black surface and then paint over it and then wherever they want it, illuminate 
they wouldn't put the black under it. Mm -hmm. Because that, even though you, you may not see that dark area, but believe me, you would have to do a hundred coats before it disappeared. Mm -hmm. So they knew all, all those things in, in the experiment. And that's what it would talk me about, about art. And that's why I read it so well. I may not be the greatest artist in the world, but I read it so well. Hmm. I'm thinking about my paintings. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very good. And a lot of a lot of lot of lot of guys start painting on white canvas. Uh huh. No. No. <laughs> okay. No. Besides oh. the prepping, there should be color. Yeah. She always comes. Do a neutral color to, mm -hmm. uh, on there. Okay. okay. Because what you're doing. You know, if you're really painting, you you you're responding to a painting. Now, I've seen people that don't respond to a painting; they got a method. Mm -hmm. Red over here, yellow over here. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. They already know what they're gonna do in the head, right? right. And they follow it religiously, mm -hmm. right? Same painting every time. Right. Nothing different. No creativity. No response to it. One of the things about painting is that um, if you learn how to listen to your painting, to your painting, not to what you want, okay. it, it will tell you what to do. You've seen it. you heard it. Yeah. You put a, a, a color down, and, and all of a sudden you say, ah, shit, that's not right. Mm -hmm. But if you fool, you say, well, I'll just go and get back to it later. Mm -hmm. Or that's how it's gonna stay. <laughs> or that's how it's gonna stay because I can't yeah. fix it. Yeah, you know because I don't know how to fix it. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's 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 the difference. I think that's the difference between 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 uh, uh, mass producing something mm -hmm. and creating something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you didn't. Uh, so all this. Uh, so you learned a lot in that shop. Mm -hmm. and did you ever go back to school? No. Because it was just like going to school. I you mean, were in your own school. Yeah, I made more money than all the professors. With that, doing with doing that, I, I, I was restoring for the biggest companies in the in the country. Mm -hmm. Paintings wow. coming in Van Van uh, uh, Van Van Dyke and paintings of that nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, they got come on, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting with the masters. Right. They don't know me, but I damn sure know them, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. and I remember one time I got excited in in, in the doctor's office uh, because I looked at this uh, book called the the, the Connoisseur, right? Okay. And it was a magazine called the Connoisseur, and I was leafing through it, and and all of a sudden there was a painting that I had worked on in the connoisseur that was being sold for thousands of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And I jumped up and said, oh, that's my painting. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh -huh. the people in the doctor's office were like, yeah, okay, right. Mm -hmm. And I'm Superman, so, you know, mm -hmm. sit down and shut up, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Right. But I was got, got a little excited because of, there was, you know, after three years later I saw it, you know, and I remember almost every everything that I had to uh, mm -hmm. uh, do to it to make it right. I, wow. I remember where the hose was and mm -hmm. pinholes and all the stuff and the little nicks and scrapes and stuff that I had to yeah. clean up. Wow, that's amazing. So how long did you work there? I worked there for uh, about five years. Uh, the fourth year he died. And, wow. uh, and, I was, and I was the man who ran it. Mm -hmm. And Uncle mm -hmm. Sam said, oh, that's too good. You had to come with us. We got a war going on. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Twenty six years old, and they drafted me. Mm -hmm. no, normally it's eighteen, nineteen. Right. I'm twenty six, and I got drafted. That's the Korean War. That was the Vietnam War. Vietnam War. I'm over. <laughs> <laughs> Over, damn man. Oh, that's right. I'm trying to remember the days you mentioned. That's all. 60s, so that was 70s. Yeah. So, yeah. so off to the army I went, and um, there I be, uh, uh, was uh, a missile maintenance person, mm. and supposed to be 
operating missiles and stuff of that nature. And one day I saw this guy in the day room drawing. I, I never recognized the guy because he never was out in the field messing with them, the, 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 the missiles. Those missiles. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, say, man, what do you do? And he said, oh, I just draw these paintings on the wall. What? I said, well, yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. You do that, and they let you go, man? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm thinking, you can't even draw. <laughs> that still looks like crap. Yeah, she looks like, uh -huh. you know. I said, shit, let me go. And I went up to my room, and I went over to PX and got me my sketch pad, and I mm -hmm. sat up all night, and I drew about three or four paintings. I drew a drawing saw it, and then I went to Ravelry fell out that next morning, and I served, uh, served, the, uh, uh, show, served the first sergeant. And I remember him saying, Johnson. Mm -hmm. Black guy. Oh, okay. He said, get your ass in the field. Damn it. He took that guy's job. Took the guy's job. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then about three weeks later, he came to me and says, Young, can you do a mural? Now, I had never done a mural on my own. Though I mm -hmm. had done a mural with uh, students in high school. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, sir. He said, oh, well, great, because you're going to paint this whole mess hall. What? Yeah. This in Vietnam? This, or you, you were it, stationed it, somewhere where the muscle, it, it, missiles were? Yeah. In Vietnam, okay. No, no in, 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 in Texas. Oh, okay. had, in had, Texas. In Texas. Where the missiles were? Uh, El Paso, you. Texas. I got you. Okay. And uh -huh. the reason I thought I was lucky, because only the Hawk missile was in Vietnam. The Nike missiles was at, in Germany and all the rest of the big country that we had uh, agreements with. Mm -hmm. Okay? I see. So, there was, and I painted this, Big, huge mural, and uh, in the mess hall. In the mess hall, and they had an unveiling, and the what? media came in, and uh, and I was a private. And the colonel's wife said, uh, uh, "Private Young, can you do uh, centerpieces?" I said, oh, "Yes, ma'am." Mm. She said, "Good. I need this man for because I'm hosting the West Point uh, dinner this year. Mm -hmm. This year in El Paso, and I I, I got to have him." Mm -hmm. So, and then she told her husband, which was a colonel, make him a uh, spec four. Mm -hmm. I said, jump him up. Jump him up. Mm -hmm. So I jumped up, spec four, and, then, and and she said, put him in the office next to so-and-so, so-and-so. She gave all the directions <laughs> <laughs> to her husband, and they mm -hmm. did. And now I'm sitting there with no nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Just, Just sitting there. In the wow. office, and they said, "Well, you can go down to a uh, uh, supply company and get all the materials you want." Mm -hmm. So I did. I went down there, and most of it was mechanical stuff, but I, mm -hmm. I ordered much, as much stuff as I could possibly get away with. Mm -hmm. And I had a truck deliver my stuff. Oh, he's in heaven. Oh yeah, kind of, because you're still in the yeah, army. You're still in the army. <laughs> but I was in the heaven hell, and so, yeah. so, uh, 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 so I'm sitting there, and the phone rang. Uh -huh. And it's for me, right? Okay. And so they had lines, you know, transferring from Chicago, and it's Colonel's wife. She said, uh, 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 "Now nah, she knows my rank. She said, Speak for yeah." I said, "Yes, ma'am." She said, I, "I meet you in ten minutes at uh, the officer club." Mm -hmm. I said, "Ma'am, I can't do it." She said, "What do you mean you can't do it?" Mm -hmm. I said, "I'll be there in twenty. I'll double time." Mm -hmm. She said, "You don't have a vehicle." I said, "No, ma'am." She said, just wait. They'll come and get you. No, they came with my vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> this Woo! man needs to be mobile. <laughs> That's right. They came with my vehicle. Uh huh. And I dropped the guy back at the motor pool. What? Now I had my own Jeep. You can't have, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, this, they got, she, she needs me on request when she needs me. That's right. Yes, right. So I laid that party out. Back for John, uh, Young yes. has to get somewhere. So. That's right. And so I laid the party out for her. They were happy. I made all kinds of Western scenes because we're in the West. Mm -hmm. And the West Point dinner went off without a hitch. Couldn't go, but. Right, right, right. Your art was there. Yeah, well, my art was there, and the centerpieces was there, and the, and the tables was, uh, yeah, man, I had it laid out. Mm -hmm. Okay.
So, 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 what was the paint of the mural that you did at the mess hall? What was it? It was about the army. I was smart enough to understand that. <laughs> it was about the army. I, I went to from George Washington in the center, uh -huh. and uh, the different wars throughout, and the and the and the, uh, you know, to the to the uh, right and left. Yeah, both and left going, going spread, uh -huh. and up to and each one, from you know early 18s, 19s, 20s, uh -huh. 30s, 40s. Did some research. You looked it up and mm -hmm. got you some. I just all, all I did, brother, is went to the army library. They had it. They had everything. <laughs> <on me. laughs> it wasn't very creative, but yeah, it, it was that, it, it and was it good. stayed there twenty years. I was going to ask you, did you ever take? Yeah, I, took, I, I went. Yeah, I went back. I got one picture, I believe. I went back and and, uh -huh. and, 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 and when I well, I was young and I, I took the picture of me uh -huh. and I'm standing in the middle of it. Okay, I, it's some young guy that I can't recognize, but now that was standing there. Sure, mm -hmm. right, a prior version yeah. of yourself. Yeah, yeah, prior, whole prior <laughs> version uh -huh. of myself. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, but uh, uh, yeah, that's how. Uh, uh, and then I was decorated as I must stood out for my service. Yeah. They actually gave me an award because they got they they had to have do something give you something because you did all these paintings all this work yeah well you know the yeah. thing about it then I then I ran across this little guy named Ronald Hill and he was a, 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 a what, an engineer mm -hmm. okay and he got drafted because he and uh, uh, before they wasn't drafting college students but then he he somehow he uh, couldn't get back to school and they got him and so Ronald. Uh, um, uh, was a little short white guy uh, who was a little brain, and he liked uh, uh, to, uh, you know, numbers and stuff. And so we would sit there and play, and then the army would let us do it. Uh, we would take uh, different vehicles and combine them, and say, "What if you put a machine gun over here?" And, and he would get the tonnage right, and he would do all <laughs> all, all the things. And, uh -huh. and so they took that little designs, and they just said, "Here you go, y'all keep working." Uh -huh. And we don't, uh, uh, we don't know if they ever came to anything, sure. but but all, that's all we did. Mm -hmm. And they paid you minimum wage. That's right, it. minimum wage. That's right. <laughs> and, and then I only had two years, uh -huh. and then that was gone. That's it. Yeah. Wow. You are listening to the Artist King podcast. Please check us out at artistking.org. So you came back to Cincinnati. Came back to Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, company that I worked for, the E.B. Clausen, had moved on with some other guys. Of course. And um, I said, well, I got to find something to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to work in the factory, and that was a disaster. And uh, I worked about three weeks, and that was it. I got fired. Okay, because you, you didn't like taking orders anyway. Well, I didn't you like it. I didn't. That. I wasn't into being a robot. Uh huh. The, the job a monkey could have did my job. Okay. Okay, and I said like, okay, I, you know, I grab a sheet of four mica and slide it over. When it comes out of there, grab another sleeve, and slide it over. That's it. Uh, the four mica company. Mm -hmm. Okay, you laminated stuff, you know, and put it under the press and, pfft, and all mm -hmm. this other stuff. But anyway, uh, that was that, and so. And King was killed, and the whole, whole tragedy, mm -hmm. another tragedy because you know, in between all this, there was tragedy going around. Yeah, you know, President was killed, King was killed, uh, Malcolm was killed, mm -hmm. Edgar Meckers was shot down. I mean, it was a lot going on, a lot going on. Presidents was being attempted assassinations and all kinds of things going on. Okay, so you you know in the midst of this. So w did you um, besides the work that you did at that shop, besides the work in the army, the artwork, did you um, did you do your own artwork on the side? Did you keep? A yeah, I, I, I always kept kept going, kept drawing. Mm -hmm. Even when they hired me to be the curator, I kept drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a job at the University of Cincinnati based upon my talents of being a restoration artist. And they couldn't believe that I could do these different things. And then when I did it, uh, they hired me. Mm -hmm. Did you have to give them a, like a field test? You had to show them? Yeah, well, what happened was, you know, the, the doors were being opened up because of black uh, people were riding in the street and they had to do something. Mm -hmm. And the government came along and said, look, 
let's get some minority uh, positions. Let's, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I came along at the right time, <clears throat> right behind all the bricks. I cut my hair the next day, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, I got a job. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, uh, you know, just going in there and getting a job, not a job. Mm-hmm. I got a job to do something, you know, to take it home, see if I can fix it. They had a, a vandal. Uh, uh, somebody took a canvas and ripped it in half. They tore it off the stretcher and ripped it in half. And then they asked me if I could fix it. So I did. Mm-hmm. And, th- and then when I charged them, they, they like, gasped. Mm-hmm. But then they gave me about four more, and I fixed those, and they gasped. <laughs> and after a while, somebody said, let's hire him. It'd be cheaper. All right. Keep him here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what they did. That's good. And and when it comes to your personal artwork, what was your what would you work on? What were your topics? Or did you have any? Did you just what did you feel like painting? What would you draw? Or did you even have time and the energy? Because I'm sure the um, the restoration itself was no. was stressful. No, no. restoration was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I drew every damn night. I was chasing women and. And drawing in bars and mm-hmm. and uh, you know just doing my thing and, he, and so I was having a bunch of fun and then I was known as the artist so I was always drawing and, mm-hmm. and and so on and then when I got the job I still drew drew and uh, made sure that I drew every night in my studio I had my studio in my home I had mm-hmm. my studio at at the school I had art set up at, at, in my own restoration studio at the mm-hmm. school I had my artwork at home. So I, I had different projects going all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and what would be some of your topics that your um that you would cover in your own personal art? Like what 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 was what drove me was, yes. was the love of my own people, and 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 the politics that we were in at this particular time. I drew, I drew scenes of, uh, of when the drug cults came in. I drew scenes of the drugs taking over. I drew t- scenes with people, you know, that was in despair. I drew, I drew people that were going to church. I drew, drew people that was uh, in school. I, uh, what, what? There is so many subjects around uh, an artist that he or she could never run out of concepts and ideas if they open up their eyes and see the beauty into what they are, are looking at. Mm-hmm. And one of my one of my favorite guys in the world was Norman Rockwell, mm-hmm. and the reason why is because uh, he, I said, well, he was just an illustrator. But let me share something with you. What if you had to come up with with that many drawings, yeah. subjects that was limited to a certain kind? If that's not creative, I don't know what, what to do. And he mm-hmm. came up with them all, 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 all the time, consistently. Mm-hmm. Okay? American life. Yeah, let me American life. Mm-hmm. And boy, did he paint American life that Americans felt good about themselves. Mm-hmm. White America could look at that thing and say, wow, that's me. That's my childhood. That's what my grandpa looked like. That's what I, the, the, uh, Thanksgiving dinner looked like. And when he, and, and if you read his history, he did something uh, to, for, to help the war effort that was tremendous. It elevated him. Uh, uh, called I think the series was freedom. What, do, what, what does freedom mean? Mm-hmm. And he did some some tremendous scenes uh, of, of, of a man standing up speaking freely in a crowd. I mean, just. Uh, the sensitivity and the, and 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 uh, the 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 vision that he had about what it is that that he he wanted to do. I wanted to be like him. I wanted to be like Charles White. Charles White was a black artist that I didn't know even existed until I was nineteen or twenty years old. And uh, when I saw his work, it almost made me cry because it was so powerful and so 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 beautifully illustrated. It was drawing a chalk and white, uh, uh, black and white. Um, I think it was charcoal drawing, and it was a young girl studying. She had fallen asleep studying. I had never seen anything more powerful than that in, I, in my life. I still can see it in my in my head. Mm-hmm. Okay, and every once in a while I run across it. And then I got the great opportunity to, to show with Charles White, uh, but I didn't never did get to meet him. Okay. And what what uh, were you like in a group show or something? It was a group show in California, and I, 
and they invited me. I, mm -hmm. I was so damn proud. And I knew damn well that I was going to be recognized because Charles White and Gilbert Young, it's alphabetically ordered, right? You know? <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They always start with A's, and, you know, uh -huh. and W, Y, Z. I mean, hey, hey, that, not too many people with Y, uh -huh. right? So I knew I'd be next to it. And uh -huh. I, when I got my little um, uh, brochure back, I was like so proud because uh -huh. now I have been with one of my heroes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I, everybody should have a hero. And I was going to be better than Charles White. Okay. Never made it. Never made it. <laughs> never, <laughs> never made it. Till right now, you're yeah, saying? No, no. Um, never, never made it. You can only be better than you. Right. Never made it. That mm -hmm. was that was my great revelation after years of trying to be better than him. Mm -hmm. I can only be better than me. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, given the time and space. And um, so you are the curator. In the in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. in the in uh, cause you're um, they they hired you, they went ahead and hired you so that you could do restore the, some of their work that they need. Did you um, help um, build their collection or get in events or create events? Well, I was, ran the also I ran the gallery. Okay. I ran the art gallery where they had shows and I was I, I curated the shows. I started out as the conservatory. Okay, conservatory. That's and, and, right, that's the restoring, and then they ended up the conservator and the curator. Mm -hmm. So I had two two uh, areas of responsibility, and uh, so I did those. And I worked in the summer times. I worked with kids doing murals in in, in the city of Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and projects with with young people uh, constantly, and uh, worked with artists. I've mentored hundreds of artists, I believe, by now mm -hmm. that has gone on to you know I know about ten of them. Personally, they're still in, in contact with me. Yeah. Yeah. And how long did you um, hold those positions? 27 years. Wow. And then one day I decided I had enough. And it wasn't no easy 27 years. No. <laughs> <laughs> Make it sound so good, but it was more than that. It course. was more than that. Everything mm -hmm. is more than what it, it, it appeared mm -hmm. to be. And then if, 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 if young artists would understand that, Everything is more than what it appears to be. You know, they look at a piece of artwork that seems very simple mm -hmm. and se seems very naive, but it's not. Right. It's, it's more than what you see. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the problems that, that young people have. And when they get out here, they, they say, oh, I'm going to be an artist. And it's more to what, and than what they saw. Yeah. And it's, it's harder than what they believe it was going to be. Yeah. It's a lot of behind-the-scenes work, a lot of time alone work, a lot of work that a goes lot into of work, it. A mm -hmm. lot of work. A mm -hmm. lot of work. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, if you're not happy doing it, see, you, uh, a successful artist, mm -hmm. I, if you're successful, you're not lazy. Right. There's no such thing as a lazy, <laughs> successful person. No. You can't be, uh... You can't be both of them. You can't be both, huh? You can't be both. Uh-huh. You can be a bad and productive artist mm -hmm. and still have success. Right. Yeah? Hmm. But you, you, you can't be a lazy one. Right. Yeah? Yeah. And I, I see people sit back and say, yeah, well, one day I'm going to have me a show at so-and-so, so-and-so, I'm going to have me a show at so-and-so. But when you, why are you waiting to have a show at that place when you can have a show on your own? Mm-hmm. Right. They're not going to come to you. Yeah. When I when I got the great opportunity to do uh, uh, a portrait of Mrs. Obama just recently, mm -hmm. wasn't my idea. I, but I had drawn the president, and he signed it, his portrait. And somebody knew that, and they came to me and said, could you do it? And I said, of course I could do it. But here's the thing. At the time they called me, I had three weeks. They wanted it in three weeks? Three weeks. That gave me a whole two weeks to crank it out. Uh-huh. Now, if I hadn't, and, 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 and I was painting on something else, and, I, and if I had not been painting, if I had not been working, which I could easily, see, I know how to be lazy, because it's a great feeling to be lazy. That's right. You, <laughs> you don't have to be, oh, man, get you a soda and uh -huh. some chips and stuff and lay back and kick back and 
what the dumb box and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know I'm an expert mm -hmm. but uh, I don't need to be the expert in that area mm -hmm. okay so uh, you can't take advantage of the opportunities when you're lazy you can't mm -hmm. because you're not, you're, not, you're not ready yeah everybody think well, well uh, when is it gonna happen well it'll happen when you get ready to do it mm -hmm. you know who knows what is in front of us and if you're not ready wow somebody else always is yeah right yeah somebody else always have a good idea mm -hmm. we got to follow school lines yeah Get the idea, jump on it. Jump on it. Be ready. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, I, I just told you about the guy that I'm drawing in Cincinnati. Didn't nobody tell me to do that. Right? Right. I just decided, I said, hey, man, you got a picture of him? Now, I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any idea what's going to happen. I'm, I'm sitting there. And first of all, the big shock, for them, is that I really done it. Because mm -hmm. how many times do people go around saying they're going to do something and they never do it? Right. Most disappointing in, mm -hmm. thing in life <laughs> is having people say they can do something or will do something and don't do it, and most of the time they won't do it. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Very few people have go, followed through with their word. Yeah. And, and yesterday, the community was that my, the man was his word, Right. Right. That was the strength and the character of those of that day, mm -hmm. and when we start lo losing that. Uh, people will tell you anything. Yeah, I pick you up. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, you know, you standing down the corner waiting on them, and they say, "Oh man, I forgot." You know what? Something came up. Mm -hmm. So there you are. That's all. All about life and all about. See, the, the, the thing about artists is that they forget one essential thing that stops them from creating art, and that is living. Mm -hmm. You got to create art in spite of, not because of. Right. You know? You, you got to create what you believe in because you believe in it not be conveniently swept in the wave of what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Because you can't stand out. You, you mostly have to stand alone, and you have to find people of right mind to run with. And life is going to continue. And it's, it's going to continue. It's going to stop. Never it done. ain't no, like, next week, life is going to pause for a second. second. And, and hold up. So hold, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> hold up. You know, I got I raised uh, five boys, and okay. uh, and uh, the, my last one is leaving this year. All right. Yeah, my oldest one is fifty one. What? And my youngest one is seventeen. Oh. Uh, going well, he's eighteen now. Mm -hmm. But I'm just as sad as I want to be. <laughs> Miserable. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. Now. You would think, well, this guy must talk to his kids all the time. No. All they ever speak to him. Mm -hmm. Dads don't ever get a chance to have a conversation. Mothers always have a conversation. Dads just sit there and listen. Mm -hmm. Okay? What it is, for me as a man, is the satisfaction that they're safe and I'm providing for them. Right. And, and, and the conversations usually go to the mother because they feel like that's their first girlfriend. That's the one they, they, they're trying mm. to impress. Okay. Okay? Daddy's little girl, you heard of that one, right? Yes. Well, that's it. Uh, first boyfriend, that's who she's trying to impress. Mm -hmm. So you know, I mean, so so if we we start understanding all these little sayings and all of them are true, and then you you get a clear picture of where where you want to go. But most of, most of the guys who who, who out here are, are impatient. I was impatient. I was just as impatient and neurotic as I could be when I was in my when in my earlier years. Mm -hmm. Wanted somebody to recognize me, mm -hmm. only to realize that it takes a lifetime. And I always tell people, I, I know the date that you're going to be successful. <laughs> Is that when maturity hit? No. When? When you're still doing the same thing and you drop dead. <laughs> Damn it. 
That's when you're successful. That's when you're successful. When you're a good man to the end. Mm -hmm. When Got you're it. a good artist to the end. Right. Okay. Whatever that date is, I know mm -hmm. that date. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, on them tombstone, they said 41 to whatever, right? Mm -hmm. 87. Well, they, and then somebody said, well, you know, that was a good man. To the end. To That's the right. end. Yep. To the end. Yeah. And what, what took me is guys who come up to me who uh, in, in my same age bracket, and, you know, they work 9 to 5, and they work for General Motors, they work for P&G, they work for Coca-Cola, they work for all these institutions. And they say, hey, man, you retired yet? Mm -hmm. And I'm always, it always puzzled me why they would even ask me if I was retired or not. Mm -hmm. I never worked. <laughs> yeah. Three weeks. Yeah. I worked three weeks. I never worked. I just enjoy what I was doing. Uh-huh. Right. You don't work when you enjoy what you're doing. Right. You work hard, but you don't work. Right. You don't, you don't sit there. You know what work for me was? What? School. Yeah. I couldn't wait till 3 o'clock. Let's get out of here. Uh, whatever. Quitting time. Jesus Christ, it's quitting time. Uh -huh. But let's check this out. You know how you can be so tired that you think you cannot do a damn thing, but you force yourself to get up and you start, and suddenly your tiredness goes away? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And you look up and you say, damn, I got to go to sleep. It's 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I got to get back up at 6. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, how do you wake up at 10 o'clock so miserable, so tired that your body aches, and you go in and you start something that you love, and all of a sudden, you, it's on? Yeah. The first hurdle is the hardest. Getting up, getting over that psychological feeling that you're tired, mm -hmm. that you can't go on. Remember that great saying? As the, the old lady saying, my feet are tired, but my, my soul is, 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 is ready. You know, mm -hmm. psychological. Yeah. So, there we are. So, tell us about um, your move to Atlanta. You quit, you, um, you retired from the conservatory. No, I quit. You quit. <laughs> Straight up. Okay, actually, I'm finished. I see you guys. I want to do something else. Mm -hmm. My wife said, you know what? I love the summers down in, in the south, and it's cold up here, and you slip and fall every year. Let's go. Mm -hmm. She found a house, and that's what happened. And I came down here because I knew that all the players that I wanted to be involved was down here, and William Tolliver and, and the Black Arts Festival and, and the history of the arts here in the city for the, for the black community. And I said, okay, this is where I want to be. And I'm going to come down, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something. And I know when I come down, somebody's going to come behind me. And guess what? That's what they did. Mm -hmm. Now we have a whole city full of black artists running around here, artists, minority artists, that are mm -hmm. trying to make it. But they forgot one thing. What's that? You only supposed to use your hometown as an address, not your platform for your greatness. So you got to go somewhere. You have to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular reason? Yeah, because people, there's a saying, old saying, familiarity breeds contempt. Mm -hmm. So you're too well known. People know you. So people know you. Oh, well, well, I just saw him last week. He, 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 he uh, the dumb butt, he almost got hit by a car. He wasn't even looking, right? Mm-hmm. So if they know those kinds of things about you, that's what they talk about. Mm -hmm. The illusion of a, of, a, of a person is just what it says, an illusion. It's not the real person. Mm -hmm. You remember how when you were dating, you create this illusion? Right. Right? You were perfect. Mm -hmm. Women can hold it up longer than men, but... <laughs> <laughs> They can hold the illusion they, longer. They, they can hold the illusion longer. But that's the only thing they got over. So uh -huh. They hold the illusion longer. Right. Okay. But the, but that, that's what, what the young artists have forgotten. They came here and they said, oh, I'm going to make a living here. They should have said, oh, you know what? The weather's fine. I, I, can, I can 
live cheaper. I can stay up longer in the summertime. I can do artwork. I can, and I'm going to send my art around this world through any means necessary. And just use a letter as an address. Like the guys who went to New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go to New York. Them guys are struggling. Little bitty ass apartments, you know, dinky boxes, paying a fortune, uh, trying to paint. But guess what? They got a New York address. Right. Want to be a movie star? Where you go? California. Oh, why? That's where the studios are. That's where the studios are, right? Mm-hmm. But who do they make their living off the Californians, or do they make their living off the rest of the world? The rest of the world. The rest of the world. Mm-hmm. It's a simple mathematic problem that people don't understand, uh, uh, especially artists. They don't know how to count. So try to live where it's cheaper. You try to live where it's cheaper, where you where 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 uh, is is you're able to to afford it. Mm-hmm. To keep your keep your overhead down. Mm-hmm. So you don't get frustrated. Yeah. Find a little job enough to carry you through, or do a skill that is that that you can have. That you know, a lot of guys are graphic designers, and so on and so on. But do a skill that uh, that you don't have to work your butt off so hard that you you don't have any energy at the end of the day, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day you're supposed to be going to work for yourself. Right. If you can give somebody else eight hours, you should be able to give yourself four. Right. That's 12 hours. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You got 12 more to, you know, to go. 12 left. That's yeah, right. Right. You got 12. Mm-hmm. See? By the time you get to bed, you should, you should have had four hours of, of you. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. It's simple. If you're married... And you, there's more, more hours, less hours. You, 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 you got, you got. I, I would say sixteen. You got sixteen hours to do. <laughs> if you're married with kids, but guess what? If even when you're married with kids, uh, pace yourself so that when the kids go to bed, and it's, it's sleep time, especially if they're young, that's the time you can get something done. The phone stop ringing and 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 so on and don't answer mm-hmm. your phone. Now people don't answer their phone any damn way. They got a cell phone and I get less answers on cell uh, cell call phone call than I had done on the regular house phone. Mm-hmm. Regular house phone they couldn't see who was doing calling. Mm-hmm. Okay, they they created caller ID that 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 slowed it down. Mm-hmm. But several they can just look at it and say yeah, I ain't answering that. Mm-hmm. We got it 24 7. And you can leave a message. So. You can leave a message, and if it's important, they will. Mm-hmm. Right? If it's not important, they will leave a message. Right. But here's the thing take it out your ear, stop playing games on it. You know what I tell young people? If you want to be on TV, don't watch it. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're going to be in the movie industry, I doubt you, you should be watching the stuff. Mm. Okay? And th- that's, that's uh, and, and, and artists have to be involved. These young artists are not involved. I looked at the, I looked at the, the, um, uh, 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 the evolution of art from my perspective, okay? Mm-hmm. When I was a young kid, a young man, the 60s came along, and we started illustrating and drawing about wanting to have equality. When the hippies came, we were drawing about, oh, because the hippies thought the world was going to end in this period of time and we'd be overcrowded because they said too many people would be eating up everything and blah, 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 blah. And they were, they were drawing art to match their thoughts and their, their vision of what the world was going to be like, right? And when... And then they drew, they wanted, they wanted a, a marijuana plant. Said, everything these kids think is this new, uh, uh, or somebody was doing it before. Uh, uh, I'll give you an example. What, what the society has done now to, to young creative minds is take the creativity away from them and then sell it back to them as a commercial. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, I'll give you one perfect example. Uh, in the early days when the Black Power Movement was coming, uh, we were drawing fists and 
and martyrs uh, 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 on the wall of king, uh, kings and people who have died like that and, and all the historical figures when he's drawn on outside of the building. Then, of course, uh, 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 when a culture is moving that fast, it starts dividing itself up and who was a real artist, who's representing the people, mm -hmm. the power and the people and all this, and black power and this power and that power and hippie power and peace and love. Remember all these, mm -hmm. these, these things? And that, these was illustrations and drawings. And, uh, and, and go and look at history, look at the history of art. The, the, uh, the artist was always in front of revolutions, mm -hmm. okay, and always behind revolutions. They always did the documents of what uh, they made the, the the villain, the villain. You know, they seen the power, the structure. They they made him look like the devil, whoever was in office or whoever was in power, the king or whoever, or the ruler. Uh, and they made them look like the devil. Mm -hmm. And they made the people look humble and uh, uh, and desirable of a, a different uh, world for them, right. And then when they had the revolution, they painted the revolution, they painted the murders, they painted the painting of, of all the people that it was sacrificed, mm -hmm. and through all um, history. And then we come up to this period of time, in my period of time, when uh, 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 we had the Black Power Movement and uh, uh, the, the farmers, uh, the Hispanic uh, Rivera, what's his name? Give me help. Cesar, uh, Cesar Chavez. C Chavez mm -hmm. out there in the, in the fields in California, and, he, in, mm -hmm. in California and, you, and you've seen the illustrations of, of the laborers and all this sort of stuff. See, that's what is missing today is because they have taken the creativity out of the people who think they're creating and thinking that I just want to be an artist. An artist's responsibility is not that you just paint, to just be painting. That's for rich white ladies who, who had... <laughs> Who, who who had the ability to hire an artist to teach him to paint on Sunday? They call them Sunday painters, didn't they? Mm -hmm. So what are these guys doing today? We went from from that in the streets to uh, graffiti art, art, where they were saying, "This is my territory, right? Mm -hmm. This is the Crips. This is the Blood. This is the I don't know the Hispanic groups, but he, all of them had territories, right? Right. Now it's individuals." They just go around spray painting poles and shit, you know. Mm -hmm. just, I'm with Walto and had a cute little name on it, mm -hmm. right? He turned it into yourself and not about what is happening out here in the people. And that's why people don't see it as anything for them. Because what people love to see is what they love to see themselves and, and, and believe it or not, what they envision for the world. You wouldn't have kids if you didn't have any vision. That's the worst job in the world. You, you love somebody, raise them, give them everything you got, and they leave you when they're 18. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a wife to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, you understand what I'm saying? All this is about what an artist can do, and I don't see the passion, and I hope that uh, the artist will take up the banner of today's society and, and give me and give us your vision of what you think the world should be or what the world has done for you and with you. Hmm. Not this from head to shoulder illustration constantly. It says nothing. It says nothing. You look in the mirror, everybody can draw from the shoulder up to the top of the head. Everybody. Because mm -hmm. that's all they see in the mirror. <laughs> right. But if you take and say, tell me a story. See what they say. Do you see a story in what you're looking at? Do you see a story when you sit down and watch your family? And do you see a story? You see a story. Everybody sees a story. You're not even telling me about it. Because it's my story. Okay? And, and that's what people want to see. The best TV shows on TV has reflected true life stories. Right? Mm -hmm. Not reality shows. True life stories. Okay? Of struggle, 
uh, overcoming, achieving, uh, what was her name? I can't think of her name right now, but movie star. I'll think of it. Said, nobody gets out of here without pain. We all got to go through it. Yeah. The thing is very important, what you just said uh, also, was that they we're no longer in, um, the community involved with our art and with our talents. And what we and what happens is um, the media takes it and then sells it back to us instead. Mm-hmm. So now fashion, music, and... Everything is, 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 is sold the back television. to you. And, 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 and they, they go... My wife and I always make a comment when we see go through the. I live in the West End, and very colorful and and, and very poor f- uh, f- folks live most of that. And and you see all kinds of things. You see fashion statements that have been made by the by the by a, a, a community that is not they don't have the resources to buy the high fashion. So the kids are very creative with what they're doing, right? Mm-hmm. And we looked at it and we and we we say, well, we kind of laugh and we say, well, it'd be on it'd be on on. On the, on the runways in New York next year because they're going to come to see what you like <laughs> and then put a high sticker price to it and you think it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. You know what gets me? Most people that I know would not pay $1,500 for a piece of artwork but they'll go out and buy a $1,500 pr- bag Mm-hmm. And and only got five dollars to put it into the bag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our values. They sold them the concept that that was important. Mm-hmm. Not not the old saying, "Your house is your castle." Mm-hmm. My house is my castle. I have art, I have books, I have everything in there that makes me knowledgeable, well-rounded, and hopefully intelligent. When I was watching the, the thing called Cribs, remember that program they had mm-hmm. Cribs? Yeah. And all these rappers was in, and I was looking at TV trying to figure out what they had in their homes. And not art. No art. Big TV sets and posters of themselves. Mm. No books, by the way, either. <laughs> yeah. No books. But I guess books is thing of the thing of the past, right? Yeah. Okay, so we won't even say that. Let's just say the iPod <laughs> they, didn't, didn't gonna, have no book. You're so, gonna forgive him for that. Yeah, we're, we're gonna forgive him for that. We we'll just say, we'll, well, let's just hope that the, the iPod that they carry had all kinds of books. All right, they, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We are, are not feeding ourselves, and uh, instead we're being told a story, and that in itself um, takes away our creativity, takes away our choice, takes away our understanding. Mm-hmm. Y'all, you guys got a lot of voices out there, a lot of creativity. Let it loose. Let it go. And don't overprice it. Don't wait for the right price to come along before you release it. Young artists are so afraid that they won't get paid and they so desperately to get paid. You don't get paid. One way or another, you don't get paid. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, will you get the pay that you think you deserve? No. Not, not likely. Not most likely you won't. Because guess what? Nobody I know is in control of money. Mm. And nobody I know has enough of it. And I know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And they always start crying about the money that they don't have. When my industry was moving and we were making tons of money, we weren't fighting over money. We were fighting over the lack of money. Mm-hmm. So, I mentioned that because that is the one thing that seems 
to kill the spirit of creativity. Most of the guys I had met in my lifetime who used to draw, who used to paint, tell me they stopped because it was no money in it. Yeah. But they're working nine to five, still struggling. Still worrying about can they make next month rent. But you gave up your creativity for what? The little money that someone else control? I watched it over the years. I watched uh, industries come and I watched industry go. And they told them folks if they educated themselves this way and got that, they would be rich and famous and everything else, and then they collapse. Mm -hmm. Or when they get so many of them, then it's not. Uh, uh, or everybody's doing that now. Okay? Now they got them fooled about the computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going to be a saturation point of how, how much money you can make in it because everybody's doing it. Yeah. I think the biggest, um, the biggest winners is the, the companies that sell. They, so they, they sell the dream. Yeah. Always the dream. Yeah. Okay. Very, very few tangible things in the world. There's always this illusion of greatness, and always this illusion of making, making millions and millions of dollars. Well, uh, Robin Williams made millions and millions of dollars, and I think he just hung himself. So, yeah. what, wasn't the answer, was it? Right. That's not the answer. That's not the answer. Keep it focused, staying sane, believing what you believe in is the answer to a happy life. You know, understand that you do your best, and, and if you do your best, how then can anyone tell you that you're not valuable? Mm That's what I tell my kids. I, they say, well, Dad, you didn't do that. I said, I did the best I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. So what is the... Um, I know you said focus. Um, don't think about the money. Think about your creativity and your sanity. And that's what you have to say to young artists coming up, working through it right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Involve yourself in your community. Involve yourself in your community. Give back. Don't don't expect to take something and you're not giving back to it. There's a 14 year old guy, a 12 year old boy, girl, who look at a 30 year old guy who wants to do art, and and probably seeing him and say, I want bitches like him. How do you help? Them? When you lift him up, that's why I'm, I'm so famous with that, that pig. It's called He Ain't Heavy. If you reach it back and lift someone up, you can all go hire yourself. It's, just, it's so simple. It's not very complicated. Everybody thinks it's real complicated. Keep it simple. You know? What happens when you get, you know when you get educated, you, you, you can take, what well, you used to do one word, now you can do five. Mm -hmm. And if you use the fifth word that, that means the same thing as the first word, but nobody knows what the fifth word is, means, you lose your whole audience. Because right? all of a sudden, what the hell did he say? What did he mean? Right. I like, the, I like honest and simple people because one of the things that they will do, they keep it simple and they keep it honest. Okay. There's a dialect in every community uh, uh, that is would be in the lower law society that doesn't doesn't have the time to be intellectual and never could be intellectual because they never had the education or the system. But you knew as a child what they were saying, mm -hmm. right? And if your mother said to you, and and, and she used different tones. And she said, 
Don't touch that. Right? Now she'll add another verb to it. Uh, a noun. Uh, for uh, She would say, Boy, didn't I tell you don't touch that? Now you know you ain't close. Mm -hmm. Right? She, yeah. didn't, she didn't say it. <laughs> she, she didn't complicate it by making a long, drawn out sentence. sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She didn't say, well, didn't I, I repeatedly told you not to do something and you did it anyway? No. Mm -hmm. When she said, boy, I told you. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, the sound. The way, the position that she took. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through all that. Mm -hmm. They knew. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. And another one is, don't make me come over there. Now, don't make me come over there means that the next time you do it, she come over there and she's going to wear you out. Yeah. Right? Somebody told me that kids have changed. And I say to them, kids have not changed. The way we treat them. Has changed. Yeah. Yep. If kids was changing, had changed, then how come they don't speak a di different language? Mm -hmm. Kids are the same damn kids that I was and my grandfather was and everybody else was. Mm -hmm. They don't know nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. But they're going to act like they do. They're going to act like they do because we let them do what they do. And we, we're, we're giving it to somebody else. We're giving it to the media. We're giving it to everybody else to raise our kids and influence our kids. And then scared not to be in favor of the other kids. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about what happened in Atlanta. What, did you, what have you done in Atlanta uh, with your art? How did the opportunity come to paint the president? And what was that experience like? Mm. Let's go into that. Okay. Well, I came to Atlanta, and I knew that uh, I wanted to, to, to do something down here that was significant. I didn't know what it was, but I just knew that, that there may be an opportunity if I came. And sure enough, it was an opportunity. Somebody had stolen my work and put it on a uh, project that they were working on. Hmm. And uh, they had told him he better get down here because the artist is here, and it was a government program and they didn't want to be sued. And so when he came, uh, he didn't see me, he saw my wife and pleaded with my wife about something. And when I got home, she had already gave me a job by saying, you're gonna help him. Instead of suing him, you're gonna help him. And that was, I became the curator for the international uh, paint power program, which went around the world and uh, help, uh, help curate that for them. And the competition was won in Russia mm. and uh, went to Russia. And uh, so that was one opportunity. Now I'm sitting back home years later. And I'm, I'm still doing my thing. I'm just showing with different people across, across the country. And uh, I got a call, call from my cousin who is, uh, I, use, I go up there every year. I still perform on stage. It's strange how, how your life thinks. <laughs> I, I perform on stage for six years. I would draw uh, a, a, a band or quartet or uh, um, a group of artists singing in a jazz a jazz thing or playing a jazz. And I, I I paint while they paint them. Mm -hmm. I just paint. I paint them while they're performing, and and then when they're finished, I'm finished. That was that's the whole key to my my little little stitch that okay. I did. And so. Uh, I did that for six years, and then my biggest challenge was to paint the Cincinnati Orchestra, the full orchestra while, while they played, and I did that. I was mm. able to do that one. So now I'm somewhat a little celebrity going up there back and forth, and, and uh, I'm bigger now than I left in the, than what I would have stayed there. Okay. In Cincinnati. In Cincinnati. So, so uh, my cousin called me and said, uh, Senator Obama is going to be here, and, and, and he's going to take the oath next month, I mean, next week in, in Colorado somewhere. But remember, they was out there in Colorado when he took the oath? Uh, where he, yeah. Okay. Okay. So anyway, uh, so he said, give me a week now. He says, uh, why don't you paint his portrait? 
I said, oh, well, I, I'm not going to do that. I, I like it, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. He said, why not? I said, because a million artists had already done it. And I looked online, they said, there's over a million different portraits of, of, of him. He was a, a sensation, like bigger than a rock star, bigger mm -hmm. than, than every festival, bigger than the Beatles, you know. So I said, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And he said, well, I can get you into a $10,000 plate dinner. And I said, whoops. Okay, I've never seen a $10,000 plate dinner. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I said, well, uh, are you sure? He said, yeah, sure. He said, just do it, man. Do, do it. And so I told my wife, and she gave me the wife uh, non-committal. Mm-hmm. That means she ain't involved. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, to any husband, mean they, they don't give a damn. So mm -hmm. I called my son in Cincinnati, and I said, I'm going to do uh, Obama. And he says, and Dad, you're not the best painter I don't know in the world. I said, what? Wow. And, uh, and and he said, but you can not draw anybody I know. And I said, okay, I'm, uh, now I'm really mad. Uh, my own son tell me I'm not that damn good. And so I'm going to prove to him that I'm better than what he thinks. I'm going to draw it and paint it at the same time. I'm going to do two heads. Okay. And that's what I did. I did two heads of him. And I said, this is perfect because one black and white, world divided, mm -hmm. full color, we're all coming together. Okay. Right? And uh, I got up there in Cincinnati uh, to, to, prevent it, uh, to present it to him, and guess what? What? I couldn't get in. Yeah, but, you, you were at the door with but, the big painting and my under your arm. And my cousin lied, and I wasn't cleared by nobody. <laughs> uh -huh. okay. And somehow, by a miracle, uh, he came out of there and was going over to take pictures with the $10,000 guys mm -hmm. and they told me where it was and I ran over there and I told a lie at the door and I said it's supposed to be an easel waiting for me and the big uh, secret service man said nope mm -hmm. uh, no easel in there and I don't know who you are and when I turned around in the middle of the hallway though it was empty it was an easel and I said that's my easel he said go get your easel and so, so there was somebody's easel sitting there that wasn't your easel you didn't easel. plant it didn't plant it at all <laughs> It was like God had sent an easel and sit it in the middle of the convention hallway. When you know, nothing, you, nothing. No, normally it's a direction sign. It was something, you know, uh -huh. but it was nothing. It was under a canopy light. Mm -hmm. and it was just shining. Yeah, it looked like an angel. Right. And I said, Lord, have mercy. I said, That's my easel. And and of course I had an assistant. And and uh, when he said, Go get your easel, I turned to my assistant, Go get the easel. Mm -hmm. And he goes down there and get the easel and come back. And then when, when all the $10,000 people come, show up, guess what? I knew half of them. Mm -hmm. right? They glad handed me, and I hadn't seen them in years, blah, 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 blah. And they tell me all the wonderful things I did for the kids, blah, 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 blah. And then the guy says, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you can come in. And uh, I, I picked up my, my, uh, my easel, and I started going the other direction. And the guy says, uh, come on in. Mm -hmm. I came there and get in. And then when I was introduced to Obama, uh, I had a, uh, my cousin introduced me. He was the mayor, and and uh, and he said, uh, "Sir, the next person you meet after me is my you know, my cousin Gilbert Young. He's an artist, uh, and this is his work." And they showed him that he ain't heavy. And he said, "Oh my God, did you do this?" I said, "Yes, I'm the artist that did that." And he said, "You're a legend." Mm -hmm. And he said, "What you have for me?" Because he saw the easel with the thing coming. Mm -hmm. And I said, "I had this," and everybody gasped when that when, when we unveiled it, and he, and. Uh, and I slowly now, they also, the lady who ran it was going to get Secret Service to put me out. Because <laughs> they had seen you and they're like, this guy ain't, well, ain't supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, my, my, my cousin, the mayor, was stopping them from putting me out physically at mm -hmm. that point in time until Obama spoke. Mm -hmm. And then Obama said who I was to the crowd and uh, about being a legend. And... Uh, and so I slowly pulled out a, a silver pen out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. slowly, slowly. Slowly. That's right. Well, I was really aware of, of mm -hmm. the danger that I was in. And, uh, and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting ready to sign it so I can get a photo up with you. Mm -hmm. And he said, nope. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, Jesus. And he said, I'm going to sign it. Mm -hmm. And he signed it, and then I signed it. And then, it made, then the next, next week he was the president. Wow. Making it the first painting in the world with a pe uh, of a president with the president's signature on the painting. Mm -hmm. 
Right, out of all the paintings and artwork that you saw online a week ago, mm -hmm. before when you were first told to paint them, mm -hmm. this is the only one. This is the only one. It's got the president's signature on it. Right. So it's in a vault right now. It's a what? He's in a vault right now. In a vault. <laughs> yeah, the I original, had, the one that he signed. Yeah, right. It's and, in a vault. Yeah. And I, I got, uh, I, I turned down a million. But, uh, For it. Yeah. Somebody offered you. Yeah. But uh, did you ever send a copy to the president? Or can you ever send him anything? No, I can't send him anything unless it, it, I'll, I'll wait till he get out of office. Uh -huh. Okay, because it goes to the White House. Oh, All gifts over two hundred dollars go to the White House. Oh, I see. To keep the bribery down, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because gotcha. I would bribe him. You could all right, right. That'd be a right, right, right. Yeah. You gonna want no, a favor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Yeah. yeah, I would bribe him. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when when he leaves office, then he'll be working on his library, and, presidential and, library, and that's when that's when we that's when you want to that's when we're planning on trying to uh, make some inroads at mm -hmm. that at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And then I got a call uh, just uh, uh, a few months ago, and they wanted a portrait of Mrs. Obama, and I did that for her, and that was for the first lady's luncheon, which happens every year, and they wanted to reward uh, rewarded her with a painting of her for her Let's Move Out initiative. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I did that, and, I, and uh, uh, you got the original still. No, or oh, you gave the original. It's in the White House, mm -hmm. the, right? Mm -hmm. To an organization called the. Uh, uh, it's a it's a club. I, I'll think of it in a minute, but it's an organization up there, of a nonpartisan organization that that uh, gives out uh, uh, this award. Mm -hmm. And now I just sent off my first reproduction to the First Lady Museum in Kenton, Ohio. So they, okay. bought, they bought one as well. Okay. Yeah, so. I didn't know they had that. Yeah. For I know. all the First Ladies? It's, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's the First Lady Museum. I, I never knew mm -hmm. they did that. And it's in your home state, Ohio. Ohio. Okay. So, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you know, everything, you know, it's a small world. It comes back and it, mm -hmm. it circles back. And, and so, so that's how that happened. It was... It was all by coincidence and, again, preparation and, not, and mm -hmm. people, people knowing of you. And uh, uh, our politician here, uh, uh, David Scott, his wife, uh, called me and, and said, hey, I, you were the one that I wanted. Uh, there was some other people that was in line for it, but I wanted you. And, and if you can do it, uh, we want you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. And then you did a painting um, last year. You presented a painting at uh, City Hall. Was yeah. it last year? Yeah. Was it last year? Of uh, C.T. Vivian. Mm -hmm. C.T. Vivian, the civil rights leader, who was a good friend of mine, by the way. And uh, uh, um, uh, and I, I tried to work with him whenever I can. And, mm -hmm. and he, he had won the, uh, the Medal of Honor of Freedom. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we want to present that to him. We'll present the painting. And I, I plan on giving that to a museum uh, uh, here, mm -hmm. and, you know. Really, what I want to do is, is, is uh, try to build a museum here myself. Okay. Uh, or, you know, with, with, not myself, but with, with the help of other people. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so, good. Yeah. So you have a focus, and you always had this um, idea of the type of thing themes you want to paint mm -hmm. for yourself. I'm, you know, I got a bunch of them. You know, uh, my latest one is and, and Still I Rise. Uh, it's a person getting up off their knees, and I did a male version. Now I'm gonna do a female version of it. Uh, uh, you know, um, um, at the f at the feet of our elders is on my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, another title, and, and so on. So I get a title, I get an idea, and then I go for it. So I'm gonna ask you um, the Obama. Painting, you did it in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And Michelle Obama in three weeks or mm -hmm. so. But how, if you have your own time, how long do you take to paint a picture? Uh, sometimes too long. Too long? Yeah. Pick but it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down? No. Uh, overthink it, overwork it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't turn out the way I want it to turn out. But it, if I move fast... And just respond to it. So it, uh, uh, three weeks is more than an adequate time. 
And you work in oils? I work in oils. I work in pencil. I work in graphite. I work, mm -hmm. you know, I, I acrylic sometimes. I use acrylic as a base to oils as well. Okay. Hmm. Acrylics are fast, and but mm -hmm. they don't have the potency. Oh, okay. They don't have the vibrant colors. Mm. Can't get it. Can't get it. I, I, acrylics change colors. Mm -hmm. You know, dry, wet. Okay. Right? I never th noticed it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the experience it, it, behind it. it, it, it gotcha. It, mm -hmm. it changes colors. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. You know, wet. Try. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why you had to use a lot of spray on acrylics and shit, trying to mm -hmm. bring, bring them up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do spray yeah. my paintings when they're done. Yeah. You had to. Well, you had to spray them anyway. But mm -hmm. but but uh, it changes it when it, when it's done. So yeah. You got to enrich it, right? Mm -hmm. It just comes alive, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you paint it, it's flat. It's dull. Right. right. Okay. So I'm going to um, ask uh, if people want to get in touch with you and, and look at your art and uh, see any of the commission work or uh, any artwork that you have for sale now, where do they go online? Uh, you know what? Uh, my site is down, but it, when it's up, it's kilbyyoungart.com. And... Uh, uh, but it's down right now. But if, if they want to do something immediately with me, go to uh, my email address is young, Y O U N G, art, A R T, one, you spell one, O N E, at AOL.com. The other thing that I've been considering is not to show everything. Uh, one not, of the, not to show everything that you already have or uh, everything that I do online. Mm -hmm. Again, if I, there's no excitement to the artist today, mm -hmm. they're overexposed, and they're using the social media to get the information out. And guess what they say? Like, like, <laughs> like, like. Uh huh. Nobody saying buy, buy, or send me, send me. It's like, like, like. So they get to see our work all the time, and we're dumb enough to put everything out there at, mm. at our own line. So there's no mystery to us at all. So I'm slowing down the process. I'll put some old stuff on there when I do the, and I'll be very careful not to put everything. Mm -hmm. Because you should, if you want to see what I got, you should come see me, or you can just come to my show. Yeah. Okay? Got it. We've got to stop being overexposed. I got a new system that I'm working on right now to make uh, uh, exhibitions more exciting. Mm. Okay? You, okay. Can't, you can't sit there and do You know what happens to the exhibition? What happens? It's a social call. Go yeah. to the show. They're all talking. Mm -hmm. And they look at the work for a minute. And they just talk. Everybody's talking about something else, but they ain't talking about the artwork. Mm -hmm. So you're working on a new system for these exhibits? Yes. Because I found something out. <laughs> and you will reveal this when the time I'll is right. I will reveal this when the time is right. Come see my next ex exhibition and you will see. Okay. Until then. Uh, you know, we, we, we must be, you must work for something too. Mm -hmm. You know, what we haven't done, young people, you have not done what all industry do is they market their work. They, you don't even get to see it. They tell you so-and-so is coming out, the new five, six series of the phone, and you just jumping for joy, and don't even know what the hell it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they keep everything secret. Yeah, they just go with it, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Movies, it's coming. Plays, it's coming. Uh, it's, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Look at me, please look at me. I'm here. No, you should have told me you were coming.
This has been an Artist King presentation. I am your host, DTM. Check me out at deltatangomike.com. Please check out artistking.org for the upcoming Artist King panel discussion starting September 9th at Binders Art Store on Ponzi City Market. Thank you for listening and see you next week.